I have a tendency to kind of just shrink these things down to a very simple form for me. I do retail sales, right? I work at a lumber yard. I do retail sales. I literally stand at a counter and ring up two by fours for customers. I mean, that's literally my job. I do a lot of special orders for the store. So that's kind of like what my position there is, is if somebody needs like, you know, special order doors or windows or needs specialty items tracked down, I'm the guy who goes and does all that stuff, right? There's other guys who do like the blueprint reading and the takeoffs and the house packages and stuff like that. I have done that in, in my past. I've done that kind of position, but I found that the position that I have taken now is the one that is best for me. Like it's less stressful. I make a lot of money doing it. It's like, you know, it's also pretty difficult to, to do that, um, that kind of thing, not to d dive into my, my personal, but anyway, um, when I, when I look at like the supply side of stuff, right? I have a tendency to shrink it down to this, a small item, right? Like I looked at the Fernco fittings when it came to the bullwhip effect, right? And how, you know, misunderstandings of how much demand there is for a particular item gets obscured as it goes through the market. Like the wholesalers, the retailers, the distributor, the sh distributors, the manufacturers, they all see like these odd amount of orders and gaps in, in production and stuff like that that are happening. And so nobody knows exactly how much they, they really need. And so to truly understand this, like working from a retail position, I saw people panic buying, right? Yeah. So there was this little tiny plumbing fitting that held up jobs, right? It can, it's just a rubber fern coat fitting. It connects two different odd sized pieces of pipe. And it's very important. It's like a $10 item, right? But it holds up like these mm. excavators if they're putting in like a, or, you know, these septic systems or something, and they need to join these pipes. This one $10 part prevents them from completing their job. Right. So mm. all of a sudden here comes the parts they are coming back in because, you know, we had this gap in manufacturing and distribution and COVID and all that other stuff. So these parts start to come in. Well, the guys who were missing these things and holding up their job, they bought them all. I said, Hey man, you know, I can get more of these things. Don't, don't stress it. And they're like, Oh no, we were out. We not were happening again. <laughs> Never again. Right. So they <laughs> buy all of them. Well, the next guy comes in, he doesn't have them. He sees that the, the shelf gets full. He buys all of them too. And they only need one, but they're buying all of them. Right. Mm. So now the computer algorithms, the the distribution network, they don't <laughs> yeah. see that this is panic buying taking place. Right. right? They're all of a sudden they're just seeing this overwhelming consumer demand. Right. Oh, my and God. So like, we've oh, got the best thing in the world. Let's make more. Right, that's exactly right. So they start pumping out a lot of these things. Yeah. And all of a sudden my shelf went from carrying typically two or three of these things. So now I have eight and they don't <laughs> sell. Right? Because, yeah right you know and so the, this is the bullwhip effect right yeah. and this is yeah. that, that truly that is happens. awesome yeah 